There's nothing else you need. If, you, if you've got this 150 quid, that's it, you can move in. So here you are. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, my God. Oh, you're going to make me cry in a minute, mate. Oh, you set me off. That was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Yeah. I knew you would. There's no way that you could have... God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh... Hey, Phil, it's Charlie. Sorry I missed your call. Oh, no worries, mate. Yeah, all good. I've got the keys. Yeah, it's amazing. you got the keys. That was the moment that I didn't know if it was going to happen because I didn't know if they were going to use the money to get him into the property or for other entertainment. <laughs> and my reaction at that point was 100% was sincere because in my mind, he just got the keys to the first safe place he's had to sleep in 30 years. And uh, have you got stuff like, have you got any bedding, stuff like that? Brilliant. Wow, what a great day. Uh, mate. All thanks to you. I'm so, well, you're welcome, Phil. I'm so happy I could help. And I'm just so happy for you. And I'm just delighted I could I could help. And, and I'm just so happy to hear that you've got yourself a place that sounds like it should be a good place. That you can oh, yeah, yeah. just relax and be I'm safe. and <laughs> Yeah, have a bit of peace at last. Sounds like you deserve it. Sounds like you deserve it. I mean, it really does. Uh, no, thank you, Charlie. I really thank enjoyed you coming today. Thank you for sharing your story with me today as well. That meant a lot. And uh, it was great to get to know you and Jane. Thank you. God bless. All right. Thanks, Phil. Have a good one. Yeah, we'll do. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Enjoy your evening. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. You did it. Oh, that's the first one of hopefully many. They're not quite how uh, probably yeah, and sooner than expected. You actually did it. In one day. Even at this point, you're not sure if it's all going to work out. You've heard stories about the fact that people get a place and after three days they just walk out. Because they can't cope. It's been, that's about six weeks ago now. Yeah. And I got a text from Phil last night. One of the things that's clear is, he's now in an unfamiliar place. In other words... His immediate mission is not just trying to find somewhere safe to sleep. Yeah, it's not the fight or flight. Right. It's, oh. For the last 30 years, it's been, oh, I'm not safe where I'm sleeping. Imagine that. For 30 years, you've just been wanting somewhere safe to sleep. Mm. But now you've got it. Yeah. He can finally unpack, go yeah. to bed at night in one yeah. place, wake up in the same place. But what he has said is he's thinking about doing a, a window cleaning round. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I mean, just the fact he's even there in his mind is, is amazing. Um, but he's also obviously still got some issues. And I, I feel like he's been in there six weeks now. And based on the text messages I got last night, I, I still feel as though he's going through a period of adjustment. Because the last time he slept somewhere safe, other than the one night in that hotel he talks about, was when he was a teenager, in the 90s, when everything was different. It's Phil's birthday, taking him for a celebratory breakfast at Toby Carvery. Can I have a really quick look at that? It's probably nice, better if I have a quick look at that now. Yes, without please bringing do. Up, yeah? I'm rather excited for you to see it, Charlie, actually. Okay. So yes, if you could, I'd be really yeah, happy. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Fine, <laughs> <Right. That's laughs> <a> it's <specimen. laughs> the best bit. It's the second best bit. So. <laughs> So this is another place that owned by your landlord? Uh, so, so, same landlord as where you live, is that right? Yep, that's right. This is another one of Paul's properties. <laughs> so he's got many. And he's a good landlord, is he? He's an amazing landlord. So they do exist? Um, well... Good, good landlords do exist. Only the one. <laughs> only Paul and Neil. Right, I've worked really hard on this. So, in two days, this is what we've... Achieved. Wow. So it's home. This is truly home. So oh, must get No started. one lying outside on the floor shooting up. And oh no. And no one smoking pot. He is lucky enough to have yeah. this amazingly large window. And if you look out the back, Charlie, you've got a what goes down into 
luckily a little backyard that goes down the bottom there you can room for a chair and the washing line and that's a storage shed there right luckily a little candle yeah. in the fireplace so lovely there'll be three in there just to make it look i've seen it in the magazine there's your telly there. that's the one we bought from birmingham hence why we needed the and did i hear you say you got you. did i hear you say you got your coasters they weren't expensive, but for no, he, but... I've got them at mine and he really liked them. I can remember when I was in there filming that and looking at Phil's face, trying to imagine what it felt like to have a safe place to sleep with this stuff. It's going to make me cry. I can't imagine what it must be like. I can't imagine. Like, you know, to anyone with a home watching this, Mm. You're probably thinking, oh God, pff, blimey. Yeah. That's not much. But it's against all about perspectives. Yeah, it depends what you're comparing it to. If you yeah. compare it to your own home, you might think, oh. You compare it to sleeping in a place with strangers you don't know where there's violent stuff happening, people setting fire to doors, drug dealers coming in, banging on the door, asking for money, people shooting up in the hallway, people shooting up in the kitchen. Mm. Non stop that as your existence. And then. <sighs> you almost need a, a, a flashback here to how he looked when he left the other place, when it was just that, the it was yeah, just almost drained, right, yeah. because actually what I just saw then is his face, and he was literally beaming. We've got some drawers. We've got some drawers. We've got, got a microwave. Is that an oven? That's an oven. Well, it is, hob. but to be fair, when I've got some money, we'll replace that with a better one. All cutlery you need, Bet mugs, kettle, yeah. tea, oh. coffee, fridge. How's it feel having this? Very good. Oh. Well, I'm so grateful to you for rescuing Well, I only did a tiny bit at the end. Oh, this is mostly you. Look, nice little tray that I brought in to organise this kettle. <laughs> Phil, I'm so pleased for you. Congratulations. Oh, no. It's you that made it happen. Yeah. Thank you. No, you made this happen. I just helped a bit at the end. You, did, uh, you so, made this happen. You recommended them to your landlords. You introduced them to them. Oh, I must admit, it's been a little. And they, I mean, because I, I bet a room like this would go really quickly, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, do you know what he without said to your me? recommendation? Do you know what he said to me? I said, "You're amazing. Thank you." And he said, "Jane, I only gave it to him because you nagged me so much." <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> well, that's your wait. That's your electricity meter, right? A quick note about coin-fed meters. I just want it on record. They are wrong. They are fundamentally wrong because the cost per unit of electricity is something like triple what the rest of us pay. Really? Yeah. So the poorest, most vulnerable, worst off people who can't get, a, get an electricity bill in their own name mm -hmm. are paying. And when you're already as stretched as that, and this is a government thing. The government's got to legislate and say, have a coin-fed meter, fine, but the rate is the same. Yeah. I get why coin-fed meters work in a scenario like this, yeah. where you've maybe got quite high turnarounds of people, you know, but it's not okay. It's got more on switch oh, shower. Yeah, okay. A huge mirror, little sink, and toilet. What more could you need? And it's super clean. There's only yeah. three of them using it. Sally comes up here. Okay. A little bit of carpet. Right outside the bedroom door? Yeah, right outside. So, how can you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, I haven't been in here for ages. Clara. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday. How are you? I'm four and a half. <laughs> High five. I did introduce all of you, didn't I? Where does um, Cara yeah. go to so this already? is Jane, this is Phil. Well, you can take your mask off now, I'm sitting down. Yeah, sorry, we gate crushed your breakfast. Oh, no, not at all. It's really nice to meet you guys. It's really lovely to meet you, Archie and Clara. Phil texted me and said, please, can we go? I said to him, where do you want to go for breakfast? And he said, please, can we go to the Tony Carvery? And it's a place that they used to go before, and it's an all-you-can-eat breakfast. Oh, really? Yeah. And... Phil did. I mean, he he went up two loads. I was so it was so nice that he got to meet the kids and they got to meet him and Anne Marie as well. Uh, and it was nice, wasn't it? It was genuinely a nice thing, and I just hope that that made his birthday also a little bit feel a bit more special than what yeah. I might have felt. 
Do you know what? You're going to remember this birthday present for the rest of your life. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yes. Where are I? Have I gone too far? Uh, no, that's just perfect. We'll pull up here and... Have a very happy birthday. Oh. Thank you. Well, enjoy yeah. the football. Enjoy Richard Branson going up in space in his rocket. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, oh. Charlie, thank you very you much, home. mate. You're welcome. Enjoy the football. Thank you for letting really? us meet your family. And, um, no, it's, it's just a, we've been looking forward to it. Uh, we must let you go or you'll never get Say bye-bye bye to Phil. Oh. Bye, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> That was nice. Um, it was a lovely way to round off this story, taking him out for a birthday breakfast and seeing his new place. How wrong were we and anyone to think that Phil was gonna just take the, the money, money and yeah, take the, take the money and run? Or you know, I he's don't know. he's turned out to be true to his word, honest as the day is long. Mm -hmm. And I think the moral of this story is don't fucking judge people because if you do there is a risk that you're going to withhold help from someone that does deserve it mm -hmm. i'm not saying anyone doesn't deserve help but what i'm saying is if you're someone that does find yourself judging people and we've had people haven't we mm -hmm. say to us recently after seeing episode two i was convinced he was a roman yeah and he wasn't and you've changed my mind about people that's the takeaway from this mm -hmm. Like do not use your prejudgment of someone as an excuse not to help them. Well, going back to what we said in episode one, in one of the pieces there, people say, oh, you know, don't help anybody homeless. If you give them money, they'll just spend it on drugs. And it's that. That is a cheap and lazy excuse to not help people. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got any change for someone who's homeless, then give them one of these. Because if you don't give it, I mean, if you really, really can't afford it because that's your food for the week, that's fine. But if you're just going to go around the pub and buy yourself two pints with this, don't. Give it to the person on the street because it will mean a lot more and go a lot further.